past weekend, some of our high school students uh, celebrated prom. You know, this kind of fun season of life that, you know, the Lord in his goodness, he gives you a couple of those. And, and so as I was seeing these pictures on Instagram and Facebook and all of these different things on social media, it, it kind of, it made me think, and nostalgic-wise, of, of yesteryear. And so when I was a junior or senior, we had several hundred in our class, and so I was gathered with my, with my classmates, and we had an illusionist who was also a hypnotist show up to our prom. And so we're going through the night and having all this fun. He's doing all these cool illusions. And all of a sudden, he had before prom, I'd been one of about seven other classmates that were selected to kind of come up on stage with this hypnotist. Now, it was all under the understanding that, look, this is fun. Just kind of go along with the show. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to kind of you know, give you some cues. And, you know, for some of you, you're going to concentrate and focus. And others, it's not just going to work. And, and so we'll just see what happens. And so we got on stage and all of a sudden, several of my classmates, based upon these cues and focusing on this circle that got really big and then really small, but upon a snap, they begin clucking like chickens. Now, this didn't have quite the effect on me, and so I'm kind of wondering, what in the world are these people doing? And so then all of a sudden, just, he had one to start moonwalking and breakdancing like crazy. And then he comes to me and says, you start singing, I will survive by Gloria Gaynor. And just instantly, I remembered the lyrics to the song that I hadn't heard in years. And at first, I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> As I began singing this song in front of hundreds of my classmates. Now, I just want to explain this. Now, the, the, the chicken part could have been easily done. I, my affinity for fried chicken is well documented here. We don't need to go into that. I, I'm headed there right after the service, Okay. Now, secondly, the break dancing, I actually, despite being a Baptist preacher, I've got moves. I've got game. In fact, we had a father-daughter dance at our kids' school the other night. And so I, I went with my third grader and my first grader, and we threw it down, all right? There was one other dad who, you know, he, they were trying, but he didn't want none. He didn't want no smoke. He couldn't handle it. And there wasn't a contest, but we would have won. We would have won. Thirdly, the only thing I could think of is that every single day of my life, my mom took me to school, just like so many of you. And my mom, every single day, would have on 92.5 FM or AM 1520, K-O-M-A, the Goldie Oldies. Now, if I would have known this man was gonna do this, I was praising God. My dad always picked us up and we listened to 107.7 FM, classic rock, all right? So I'm just grateful I didn't break into some Led Zeppelin song or something like that, right? But here's my point. It's senseless. It was silly. It made no sense. And that's exactly Paul's point. You know Christ. You have heard the gospel. You have placed your faith in the risen king of the universe. And you're giving your life and you're allowing your home to be infiltrated and you're allowing your heart to be infected by a false gospel? By a faith and gospel? By a faith so what gospel? No, you know better. And that is why he says at the end of verse 1, it was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified to you. That it was Paul himself who had vividly and powerfully and undeniably declared the gospel publicly to them, that they knew the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. That the cross is not just some historical event, but rather the ongoing reality in the life of the Christ follower. So much so that the moment you place your faith in Christ, God places you on that cross with Christ. And when he died, you died with him. And as he raised, you have been raised with him. You see, the gospel of Christ is not good advice, but good news. You see, advice is counsel. It's, it's optional. News is the report of facts, actions that happened. Advice it's, it's really up to you to do what you want to do. No, news is a report of what 
has already been done. And that's Paul's point. That before your eyes, that Jesus Christ has been portrayed as crucified. That the coming promised Messiah, the king of all the universe, came for you. And in light of who he is, king, you can never be. In the light of what he did, gave his life on a cross, you could never do. So stop trying to earn your salvation. Stop running from this king who is in control of all things. Stop building your own kingdoms. And build his. Because see, unlike any other religion ever fashioned before man, unlike any other contrast, philosophically or moralistically, given to you. No, the truth of the gospel is distinct. That the king who reigns came to give his life for his people. And that the moment his people give their lives to the king, he reigns in and through them. This truly is good news. Because this is not warranted by God on any works that we do or could ever do, but rather on what his sufficient son, his perfect substitute and sin-bearing son, the king, has already done. 